Nice. All right. If anybody else happens to enter into the room, please let me know. Because sometimes I don't always see all the all of the prompts. Um, I wanted to find out what people's experiences with with crystals already, because um, I know uh, initially for me, I was always collecting rocks as a kid and from very early on. Um, and as you get older and more into this, the crystals get bigger, and more expensive and good stuff like that. So um, I always like to kind of get an idea of where people are with working with crystals. So I'm actually going to pick on Erin first, if that's okay with you, Erin. Yeah, I see the look. <laughs> You're still on mute, hon. There we go. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I was the same way. I always, you know, collected rocks and crystals and never really understood them, but I just, I loved them. I would go to like a country store and like always pick out like 10 different stuff. Even if they were in my yard, rocks were always in my, in my room and stuff like that, painted everything. Um, I just started really getting into knowing their background, probably like maybe less than a year ago. And I have like maybe about like 30 different ones now. Very cool. Very, yeah. very cool. Um, and certainly different crystals are great for different things. We're going to cover a lot with the chakras and what crystals are good with what types of, of issues are going on with the chakras, what uh, types of crystals you can certainly use with uh, helping with building energy to help with calming energy and so on. Um, Arlen, tell me a little bit about your journey with crystals, if you don't mind. Don't want any info on recording won't respond okay no worries no worries all is good um jeremy do you have it um where are you with working with crystals so like i've always had like these gifts that um since i was little and stuff like with energies and stuff and then like i was always attracted to like the onyx i was always attracted to rose quartz and then i did the research for my zodiac sign and that the Venus is the planet of the Taurus. So like that. And then it's more yin. I always felt closer to females. So I'm like more yin. And then I've also like, I have crystals in front of me right now. I have my rose quartz, clear quartz, and my um beautiful Selenite. piece. Selenite. So like, and also through my experience, um, through recovery, I went to crystals to help me heal. And that's what's basically helped me stay. And I got like 22 months sober on a 10th. So like, Crystals, I put, I put it, I put it on my life that's helped me with so much shit, and it's helped me open up my like everything that I need to be open. It's been like opening it up. So, and then I Google on what crystals uh for like Reiki. I Google what they like. I have Roronite for like the the wounds, emotional wounds and stuff, because some of my recoveries have big emotional wounds, and yep. I ended up giving some of them the crystals itself and help to show them how to meditate and stuff like that. So like I'm trying to help people with the holistic way perfect that's wonderful how about you steph um i grew up in new hampshire so the rock thing and the stones i completely get it um, the granite state gotta love it <laughs> absolutely um but i i went into um i went into um sorry <laughs> thank you i'm massage therapy and i started learning about uh, i picked the um sports medicine their uh massage and i started learning about what the other group was doing which was all the crystals and i was very jealous that i didn't get that group um but yeah, I started learning about stones um, and crystals maybe within the past year or two and um, try to use them. I, like Jeremy said, with uh, we're trying to learn with chakras and what goes with what and what helps with what. And I just want more kind of 
learn more. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and get everything kick started. And um, like I said, this is this is going to be if people do have questions, by all means, let me know. I'm happy to answer them um, as we as we go. Uh, I want to continue as me. Come on. Not what I wanted to do. All right. So I am going to hit, hit present. All right, so we're going to go through these these uh, screens, and uh, I'm glad people do have um, something to write with and, and so on and, and have crystals with them because um, I do plan on doing a, um, a crystal type of meditation um, a little bit later on. So we're going to go ahead and just get everything started. So I wanted just to kind of really get to the very, very beginning of things. And that also means working with um, crystalline structures. So I'm moving us around here to try and make sure that we're able to see everything. So bear with me. So there's actually um, uh, crystals are basically created from gas or liquid, uh, of liquid based solutions. Um, basically, they're all made up of different atoms that have bonded together into re regular repeating ways, and they create a solid, okay? We, we sprinkle in some sacred geometry, and we get some pretty amazing things. So they are born from pressure, or they're born from heat and pressure in particular. So, and all crystals have the same fundamental internal order of atomic structure lattices, um, I know in some cases we look at the true scientific way that they're connected and it can be, it's like going down a rabbit hole. It, 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 there's a lot that, that you can certainly look at with that. Um, but we wanted to talk about how these are in particular focused on coming, are born from pressure or they're born from heat and pressure from the ground. So we actually have three different types of rocks, uh, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. So I wanted to talk a little bit about those because let's face it, rocks are very pretty, but we also like to know kind of how they get their really awesome colors and how they get their their special uniqueness, right? So igneous, we look, uh, one example of igneous would be obsidian. And obsidian is actually a volcanic type of, of rock. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, sedimentary. Um, that is all little bits and pieces that are, are coming together and, and being um, um, applying heat, basically. So the igneous is more like the pressure um, and then like an explosion, like with a volcano, where the calcite is, is a little bit different. But the metamorphic, we're combining a little bit of both. And that's where we would get a garnet. So, I mean, look at the definition of a diamond. Technically, it's carbon. If you squeeze it hard enough, you get a diamond, right? So igneous, like I said, is from volcanic activity. So different crystals that we would find would be obsidian, um, granite, diorite, pumice, and diogranite. Um, the... Crystal skull that you see there is actually um, Hagak. Um, he's one of my crystal skulls that I actually brought home from Egypt. So these are all um, types of crystals that are literally put under pressure. Um, we um, They come up as a type of magma through the moving plates of the earth. And that's when the, press the pressure causes things to pretty much spread all over um, and to create lava flows. So this would be what we would call igneous. So granite state, yes, obviously granite um, is definitely igneous type of rock. So sedimentary rock, we're looking at different types of sediments that are falling, that are all sorts of little pieces of rocks that include animal skeletons, 
um, things that are pressed together at the bottom of the ocean or the river that form new rocks. So uh, rock salt, in this case, the Himalayan salt caves, you know, um, limestone, um, calcite. Um, if you, I like working with calcite. I have a piece of calcite right here. Um, calcite is considered a sedimentary rock. Um, and the interesting part is um, if you apply the um, metamorphosis to it, like when when limestone turns to marble, you're act you're adding in the heat and pressure. So metamorphosis is that kind of catalyst that kind of creates it to go from one type of crystal to another. So these are some types of of um, sedimentary rocks, and we're going to talk about more of some of these different types of rocks as well. And then the third type of crystal is the metamorphic. Like I said, these are the ones that are under a lot of pressure and under a lot of high temperature, okay? And these are the types that are found um, when we apply these, we get these really cool things that look, that are basically uh, and sometimes on different types of, of matrix. Like for example, that garnet that you see there, those reddish pieces are the garnet. However, it's on a matrix. Same thing with the starlight. So we are basically adding in this element of heat and pressure combined to create this metamorphic type of, of process. So serpentine, which I got here, um, tiger's eye, I don't have any tiger's eye right now. The starlight you see, garnet I do have. This is a tiny garnet. Garnets tend to be small. So one thing I wanted to mention is that any crystal that has endured a metamorphosis facilitates the space on a spiritual and energetic level for transformation. So you can kind of view those more like transformation stones, which um, is, is very, very helpful. So um, these are the stones that are turning from one stone to another, okay? So if you look down below that pink and green stone, that is uh, ruby and zoite, which I have a piece here, okay? So ruby and zoite. So this is taking um, the pressure and combining things. And then you factor in the fact that we also have other elements that are um, also uh, entering into these different types of, of, of crystals. We get these types of stones. Usually metamorphic crystals aren't flashy. They aren't the real super duper pretty ones. Um, but um, there are a few like that ruby and zoite, like the um, lapis uh, lazuli that you see in the upper right hand corner. Um, soapstone, if you have any of the soapstone carvings, like, like some of the Native American carvings, um, that is the type of process that this would fall under, okay? So many more, many of the metamorphic rocks are um, alternating color. Um, normally they tend to be shades of gray, black, brown, and things like that, um, but they may have some bright shades. The other thing I also like to talk about are tectites. Now, um, how many of you are familiar with, with tectites? Um, tectites are actually um, glass-like crystals. So you may kind of want to put it into the category of like an obsidian. However, it's generally derived from sedimentary rather than igneous rock. So these are the Moldavites. These are the Libyan desert glasses. These are the Igni Menites, uh, Menites, which are the pearl of divine wisdom. So these are all um, glass-like type of rocks that are formed when a meteorite has struck an area um, on the planet, creating a glass-like type of energy. And the idea behind it is they have, they carry a very high vibration. So um, they come, they're all over the world. The, the green ones in the bottom corner are Moldavite. Those come from uh, the Czech Republic. The um, 
kind of brownish uh, gray ones on the far right. Those are the uh, Pearl of Divine Fire. Those are actually from Indonesia. Now, the bottom right, sorry, bottom left, and also the upper right that you see there, um, those are actually Libyan desert glass. So these meteorites, as they're falling out of the sky, are very, very hot. If they're striking different areas that have things like sand in it, it's going to melt it into glass. So Libyan desert glass um, carries a very high vibration. And then the, the top one um, is one from Russia. And the one that looks like a big old cat turd, um, that is actually um, one from Egypt. Um, it's considered an Egyptian um, black diamond because um, it has a lot of carbon in it. So um, these are really interesting to work with. They carry a very high vibration. Um, if you all remember the praise of the Moldavite, um, this is something, this is what it was working, this is what we were working with. Um, some people find that Moldavite is exceptionally, exceptionally high vibration and it's just too high for them. People who are more earth, um, earth signs or, or need to be grounded and anchored, they may have, it, they may have troubles with this because it really kind of kicks things up in the higher, in the higher chakras, but it's certainly a good, um, it's an interesting crystal to talk about. So like I said, if anyone has any questions, please don't be shy. Okay. So I wanted also to talk about different shapes Crystals have lots of different shapes that we work with and we use them everything from healing and meditation and protection to expanding the mind. Um, so if you look at the very, very top, you'll see what looks like um, a six uh, faced structure. Those are usually quartz and the one in the middle is uh, rutilated quartz. Um, we would use those for healing. We would use, definitely use them for meditation and protection. Um, those are considered towers um, or points that we could use. Um, for example, I have one here. I could use this in um, energy healing. I could use this technically as a wand if I wanted to, um, things of that nature. Um, crystal points are available in all sorts of different types of forms, which we'll take a look at it uh, a little bit later on. So a single crystal point is often used in healing and pointed away, it draws energy off the body. Pointed inward, it's gonna channel, uh, channel energy inward, okay? And like I had mentioned, the idea of a generator. So we're talking about the crystals that you might see in the crystal shops that are maybe kind of, I don't want to say too short, but maybe kind of short, but chunky, but it's like, it would be like if this were a tower, but maybe a little bit bigger, okay? Those are things that you might use um, um, in order to, as a generator, a standing point, basically. And those are amplifiers. Those transmit um, and those generate energy. So it also focuses on clarity of intention and optimizes the stone's healing facility, uh, faculties. So we also have crystals that are double terminated. So when we have a point on a crystal, that's a single termination. If we have them one on each end, like a Lemurian seed crystal, um, that is called double terminated, okay? And those are just channeling energy through. It's almost like a pass through. Those are great to use, like let's say with crystal gridding, uh, and they're an, they're a bridge between two energy points. Okay, um, pyramids. I love working with pyramids. Um, I do have a couple. Um, those are good for amplifying energy and then tightly focusing energy into a small apex. Okay, um, I'm sure since we're heading into the Halloween season. Everybody is is uh, looking at all of the uh, cool stuff with the scrying and things like that. 
So spheres symbolize unity. They symbolize completeness. I have here a, um, a carnelian sphere, um, which I keep on my desk. I seem to have an obsession with carnelian, not going to lie. Um, but ultimately, those are good. They simplify infinity, the whole universe. And like I said, um, they're great for scrying. They're very closely connected to spirit, um, to spiritual nature um, of our complete self. And they bring out clear thinking. They bring out better union of body, mind, and spirit, things like that. So um, if we were going to work with scrying, we would go through a whole process of clearing and cleansing and meditating and, and working through that. And I see a question in the chat. I have a worry stone. I'm not good with spelling as a sphere on my desk. Very cool. Very cool. Um, yeah, sometimes the names are a little bit long and they <laughs> they get a little complicated. So um, a lot of people just like to decorate with crystals. I'm going to see what the other question is. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, a lot of the, a lot of crystals, I mean, it's funny. Um, I sometimes will hear people go into the likes of home goods and places like that. And they're like, oh, I buy my crystals there. I'm like, oh, dear God. Um, but they have, people are decorating with crystals. You know, um, a lot of athletes are incorporating crystals into a lot of their, their, um, um, their routines as well, believe it or not. But yes, placing spheres in a room or on a bedside dresser or an office desk will help emanate particular energy that you feel is needed. So as an example, rose quartz is great in the bedroom and to surround yourself with love. Jasper will emanate protection. Um, clear quartz will cleanse the room of any negativity. And malachite will bring prosperity and money to business. So, and um, like I said, when we work with divination, crystal ball gazing, there is a whole process that we follow. We keep the crystal ball um, wrapped up in black silk when we're not using it. And um, it sits on a stand um, and it goes through a whole process where, uh, as I had mentioned, you um, you cleanse, you charge, and then you set an intention. We'll talk more about that. Um, you can scry not just on crystal balls. You can scry in water. You can scry in fire. Tea leaves, that's a form of scrying. Um, clouds. Um, if you've heard of scrying mirrors, the um, uh, Aztecs in particular would actually uh, use um, um, black glass mirrors um, in order to scry. Um, and they would connect that with um, what was going on within the universe, um, especially with the um, astral um, and the um, stars. So they would work a lot with that. So eggs, eggs are great for the symbolization of springtime. As we know, when we see eggs, we think Easter bunnies and chicks and good stuff like that. That is because it is all about the powerful symbol of fertility, purity, and rebirth. So um, let's say um, magic rituals um, would often use eggs to promote those types of things for restoring fertility uh, for mind, body, and spirit. Um, they are all about new beginnings, resurrection, things like that. The vernal equinox celebrates the coming of spring and the egg is the important part of this ancient festival. So crystal eggs, I got one here. This is another form of carnelian that is a little bit lighter. Um, those definitely can, can help. And like I said, wands, we can use a wand. Basically a wand is a way of directing or pushing energy. So what I mean by that is if we want to guide energy to go to a certain place or a certain thing, we would use a wand. We can use a crystal point. We can use our finger, you know, um, wands are, um, 
easy to work with. Uh, again, you do, if you're going to have a crystal wand, then you're going to want to really make sure that you're cleansing, clearing, and charging. Um, massage wands, you know, those are ways of um, working with the energy and energy within the body. Um, alchemy wands used especially for the chakras, um, things of that nature. So um, I know, Jeremy, you had your um, selenite um, knife that was there. Uh, same. So um, you probably could even use that to some degree as a wand as well. Right. No, not out of the question. So, yeah. like I said, you don't have a if you don't have a crystal wand. Guess what? Your finger works just fine. Right. Because you're oh, yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. I love working with crystal skulls. As you saw, Hagak earlier, we actually have a couple of different types of crystal skulls that I just wanted to touch upon. Just quick. Um, we're not really going to get into it, but I wanted just to kind of make sure that we kind of covered potentially a lot of the different types of shapes that people might see. Um, we actually have um, a couple of main types of, of crystal skulls. So obviously the one, um, the one in the middle is Labradorite, and that's a dragon skull. That is great for working with the ley lines or the energy lines that wrap around the planet. Um, Labradorite is very good in terms of it being magical and protective, but um, it, it's known that the uh, dragons will protect and work through the energy lines or the ley lines that crisscross the globe. Um, you're gonna see some of the other types of skulls that are here. So I wanted to touch upon the skull on the right. And that one's actually very, very famous, believe it or not. That one is the Mitchell um, Hedges skull. That one is one that's part of a group of 13 skulls that were found um, throughout uh, South and Central America and other parts of around the world, allegedly. And it's made of completely clear uh, quartz crystal. And it has been researched multiple times to determine that there are no tool marks on it. Now, allegedly it was found in a tomb, um, an ancient um, pyramid type of structure in, I wanna say Central America by um, an, archeologi an archeologist daughter. And she happened to reach her hand in and allegedly found it. Um, there is a crystal skull that's like this in the British Museum. So IBM has done a lot of research on trying to determine if it is definitely ancient technology that's coming forward. But you look at crystals, you know, we have crystals in everything well, from our cell phones to our computers, et cetera. These are basically big computers. They store energy. They store um Akashic records, they store a lot of different things. So um, the he the Mitchell Hedges skull is the one in the upper right, um, but we also have some other shapes. Um, you see the bottom right one um, is a star seed. Um, that one is, is considered alien, that's another type. Um, the bottom one that you see there that's kind of brownish that's made of uh, smoky quartz, that one it looks more childlike. Um, again, they all um, are have a lot of energy in them. They all have a lot of um, knowledge that they carry. And it's thought that all of these ancient skulls, when put together, would potentially create um, the opportunity for them to connect and share information. So I want you guys to see the skull that's on the left-hand side, the purple one made of amethyst. That is considered a star traveler um, because you see that whoosh on the back. Um, that is Alia, my traveling crystal skull who goes with me wherever I travel. Um, then I also have in the bottom middle, this guy right here. 
So he's more humanoid, kind of along the likes of the uh, Mitchell Hedges. Um, so those are kind of the different shapes, I would say, of crystal skulls. But again, they all carry a lot of very high vibrational energy. Most of these um, very ancient crystal skulls are usually made of quartz, um, sometimes smoky quartz, sometimes rose quartz. Um, they're used for lots of different things and they all have different unique personalities. Um, I have another one here. A little guy, little, little. So this one here, um, sometimes will travel with me as well. Um, and there's some really interesting crystal skull carvers that are around the world that um, really do a phenomenal job with um, carving. I like to get my skulls from um, Leandro de Souza. He's, he's a well-known skull carver from Brazil, and he actually carved um, Alia, the uh, amethyst one, and he carved the little one that I just showed you. So. Any questions? No, we're good? Good. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the fact that when I mentioned the single pointed um, top of a crystal is a single termination. You'll see what I mean. Um, the double terminated, um, you'll see these are actually different individual types of, of um, I'm going to say, um, classifications of crystals. So for example, we could have a cluster. We could have one that has a little trigger. And I, I don't think I have it here, but I have had one that does have what looks like that little teeny tiny thing coming out that does look like a trigger. Um, we sometimes will see pyramids in the crystal space. Um, they're very well known in, in um, ruby. This is a ruby. And do you see the pyramid that I'm trying to show it so we can kind of see it? Um, you'll see pyramids. Those are called record keepers. And it's thought that those store energy. So many times I, when I find a crystal, I'll, um, after I bring it home and I cleanse it, clear it and program it, et cetera, um, or before I program it, um, I'll sit in meditation with it and just kind of ask it about its journey and its connection and um, how it came to me and, and things like that. So especially if they have record keepers, those are really important. Um, we also have some self-healing ones. So sometimes as crystals are growing, they may kind of fracture and then they kind of will self-heal. We also have crystals that will um, merge together or as they're growing, grow together as twins. Um, and then we also have some crystals that have little teeny tiny windows, you know? So those are those are things that are all part of some of the different things that you can see on a crystal and, and about the crystal. But I like the fact that the crystals in particular, um, as they, they heal, they'll self-correct and they'll keep on growing, which is kind of neat. The other two things I wanted to mention on here is um, something called a complex crystal. And that is, in some cases, a super seven or something called a melody stone, where it has seven different elements in it. I call it the Swiss Army knife of crystals. So if you find a super seven or a melody stone, it's going to have things like um, amethyst, um, clear quartz. It might have smoky quartz. It might have citrine. Um, it could also have... Um, Cacoxanite. Um, it could also have some of the other things that you see there, like uh, rutilite and um, uh, some of the other elements that are there, some pyrite and hematite. Um, the other, so the other thing that you see there with the list of all of those elements, that is called Super 23. And that has a lot of stuff that the Super 7 has, but more. And Sometimes it's also called orolite. So they tend to be very heavily um, amethyst in particular or quartz because quartz 
Amethyst is part of the quartz family. Rose quartz, et cetera, are, and uh, smoky quartz, citrine are all part of the quartz family. Um, the bottom thing that you see there on the bottom right, that is orgone. Um, how many of you have ever worked with orgone before? Um, orgone is a man-made material. It's actually resin that's poured into a mold. And then it's filled with crystal chips. It's filled with maybe some metal fragments, some, some silver, some gold, maybe some copper. Um, you'll also notice that spiral in there, that is a Tesla coil. So the nice part about these is you have the pyramid shape, which we talked about, but you also have the Tesla coil in there that's also always going to help generate energy. So um, a lot of the different um, psychic fairs, if they have vendors, will sell a lot of the different argon types of products like this. Um, I have one here. This is actually a coaster. So this is a coaster and it has all sorts of different material. It has all sorts of different crystals. It has all sorts of different like copper chips and crystal chips. It also has a, um, uh, what is it? A Metatron's cube in there. So the idea is I can put my drink on it and it's going to cleanse my drink energetically speaking. So orgone works really well. I have a couple of pieces of orgone. I have one really large um, orgone piece that's actually a large um, pendulum that will clear an entire house. Um, I have a large pyramid that I keep in the healing area at the studio. Um, I have orgone um, uh, what are they? Uh, pendulums. Um, and some pendulum that one of the pendulums that I have um, is orgone with, um, oh God, what's that crystal that's really, really super duper protective? Um, comes from Russia. I'm drawing a total blank. It'll come to me. Um, I'm going to keep on moving on, but it'll come to me. Um, that's something that I might use when I'm clearing somebody. So um, those are some other types of crystal products that are really, really good to work with and to have in your arsenal. So we can use crystals for a lot of different things. If they promote healing, they can support and balance emotional energy. They hold space to experience mental clarity and awareness. It can increase awareness, encourages creativity, it unlocks intuition. Um, it works on an energetic level to help heal disease. Now, the reason why we say disease is because um, obviously we want to make sure that we do not replace crystals for doctor advice, but they can certainly um, help add uh, another layer of, of support to help with some of the different things. Okay, we got a crystal at the crystal store. It comes home with us, right? First thing that we do when it comes through the door, we cleanse it. Cleansing and cleaning your crystals is incredibly important um, because you wanna purify the energy and restore the vibration. You also don't know that crystal's journey. Um, you don't know if the person who picked it up before you was having a really bad day. Um, things of that nature. So storing and organizing your crystal collection can certainly help uh, keep the property um, more crisp and clean. And after we've cleansed and cleared, we want to make sure that we charge them and revitalize the crystals and give them a task, okay? So how do we cleanse them? Well, there are some tools there. Smudge, um, like sage, um, Palo Santo, that's the wood in the middle that you would burn. Um, so there's some other ways of cleansing crystals as well, but we cleanse, we charge, and we program. So again, sacred smoke works really well. 
incense. I don't, I prefer not to use sage. I prefer to use maybe the Palo Santo. I prefer to use frankincense and myrrh. Um, you can use um, water. You can put them under water as long as they are a type of crystal that is okay about getting wet. There's some crystals like gremlins you can't get wet. Um, you can put them on salt. Um, again, there are some crystals that don't like to be on salt. Um, you can bury them in the ground. I just strongly advise you to mark where you buried them. <laughs> um, things like that. Um, but those are good ways of cleansing. Now that we've cleansed them, we need to charge them. You can place them on a selenite charging plate. And a lot of the different places will sell them. Um, or even like a large selenite wand that's flat. Those work great. Um, you can ask Archangel Michael or another archangel or, or ascended master to charge the crystal. A lot of it is also done by visual, visualization. Um, tomorrow night is the full moon. Stick them out in the full moon. Some you can stick out in the sunlight. Some do not like being out in sunlight. So if they have a bright color like amethyst, like carnelian, um, things like that, um, those are not going to do well in the sun because they're going to eventually fade. So you don't want to um, keep them in the sun all the time. Also, another important note is that let's say you have a nice crystal ball and you place it on your windowsill. Think about the magnifying glass and ants. Um, you don't want to burn a hole in your windowsill um, because it is potentially going to help um, um, harness the energy of the sun. So just be careful with that. But crystals are like batteries and you need to keep them optimally charged. So once we've cleansed them, once we've charged them, next step, we need to program them. Otherwise, they're sitting there and they don't know what they what you need them to do. So setting the intention, holding it to your heart, breathing three times into it, all while remembering the, the intention, holding it back to your heart is a great way of setting and uh, the program for it. OK, um, they're not going to work unless they know what their job is. Uh, is essential oils OK? Um, how do you how do you mean like to cleanse them? Yeah, like instead of using like sage, like can you use essential oil sage and like clean it that way or? You could. Um, I would probably go with either the salt or um, water or something like that rather than using an oil. But if you don't have it, then go for it. You know, you might even be able to um, create something that has uh, the, the purity of uh, let's say frankincense and, er and myrrh in um, like a, a, a water type base that you would spray in the room. Um, you know, you can, I call it yuppie smudge. Um, you can use that um, if need be because it's purified water too. So um, we basically will charge them. Like I said, selenite is great to charge. You can use a copper pyramid. Now, here at my house in Rhode Island, I have an eight foot by eight foot copper pyramid um, outside in a tent, which we do a lot of work in. Um, we find that it helps raise the vibration tremendously. And it will also utilize the copper elements in order to um, program and, and uh, work with, with that energy. As a matter of fact, we just did a table tipping um, the other night in the copper pyramid and it really was very very strong it was much stronger than normal i would say so so i wanted just to kind of throw these things out color is important and this is actually something that i use when i work with um angel healing but i also wanted to bring this in because 
you know, in many, many cases, these colors carry a vibration that help us work on something that we need to work on. So if we're focusing on um, something like um, strength and grounding, then we're gonna look at something that might be red. Um, if we're looking at bringing in happiness and optimism, then we think of yellow. If we're looking at bringing in healing and harmony and peace, and unconditional love, we're looking at green. So I thought this was a good guide just to kind of give us a, a way of, if there's something in particular that you're wanting to focus on, then those are the colors that you're gonna to wanna to try and tap into. Um, I just recently um, went for another certification as a crystal um, healer. And they actually do something really interesting where instead of just, uh, focusing on the color of that one crystal to put on that one chakra, um, you're also, let's say if something is overstimulated, then you're putting the opposite of what that color crystal is on that particular energy point. So for example, um, if, let's see here, um, technically yellow and, and orange um, are, are opposites. Um, so I would, um, no, sorry, blue, blue and yellow, sorry, blue and yellow. So I would, I would compensate with the color that's going to help even something out. So that's something to think about if need be. But I thought this was a good way of just kind of getting an idea of what some of our emotions and thoughts and feelings are, um, as spoken in color, because when we get into the chakras, so much is really um, woven into the colors, the chakras. So um, these are the seven basics. And these basic seven chakras, um, this is something that is Sanskrit for um, energy point. Um, each particular chakra holds a different, I guess you could say, um, um, energy, okay? Um, and we find that if we are having trouble being grounded and anchored, then we need to focus on the root chakra. If we want to focus on manifesting, we're focusing on the solar plexus. If we want to bring in love and we want to bring in healing, then we're focusing on the heart so chakra. If we're looking to find our voice or if we have a lot of sore throats, we're looking at the throat chakra. So the third eye is our connection to spirit, I see. And the crown is connected to the divine. It's connected to source, knowledge, and things like that. So when we work with these and we make sure that these energy points are clear and clean in the body, then that's going to allow for any messages that maybe spirit might be dropping in um, can drop in clearly and we're going to get the the um, broadcast. I like to say that we're kind of like radios and we need to fine tune ourselves in order to be able to get the right message. It's kind of like if you have um, a radio that's between two stations and you need to kind of fine tune it in order to get the right message and hear one channel, right? So by having these seven uh, in particular in prime working order, then that's gonna be a huge help. Now, mind you, we have way more than seven, um, but these are the basics. We have um, a soul star chakra, we have an earth star chakra, we have a Gaia gateway chakra and much, much more. And there's chakras throughout our hands and our arms and other parts of our bodies, um, but they're energy points. And again, we just need to make sure that they're clear, they're clean, they're grounded, and that they're firing on all cylinders, basically. So whenever I do work with people, the first thing that we do is we go through a chakra clearing because we wanna make sure that they're grounded and anchored for it. And we also wanna make sure that whatever information that they're going to get from the healing, from the class, et cetera, 
is going to be in a space that is um, held down and allowing them to be able to get the full transmission. Now, how do these chakras, these seven chakras relate to some other stuff? Well, we can actually add in crystals to um, work with these seven different energy points. So the root chakra is, we like to call it the base of the spine. The sacral chakra, I call that um, just under your belly button. Your solar plexus is um, in your, your belly. Heart, that's pretty self-explanatory. Throat, third eye is between your eyebrows and the crown is at the very top of your head. So these are some of the different types of crystals that you would see that would work on maybe helping in increase or restore somebody's um, energy. Um, certainly when people have a blockage, energetically speaking, that's when we have illnesses that happen. Sometimes we might have, um, believe it or not, it, it's said that if you have knee pains, then it's connected to the heart. Um, if you have sore throats, then definitely, you know, your throat chakra, you're not necessarily using your voice. You're not speaking your truth things like that. Um, people who might be focusing on uh, fertility, they'll do a lot of work with the sacral chakra. Manifesting is all solar plexus. Okay. Just going to check. What about back pain? Good question. So back pain I am going to go with a combination of root and sacral. In particular, root and sacral. Um, so many people, whenever we do like meditation stuff, they all want to focus on the heart, throat, third eye, and crown because those are the fun ones. And they don't want to put the work in necessarily speaking to the root, the sacral, the solar plexus. And those are the ones that are so incredibly important because if we're not grounded and anchored, we're not going to get the messages. Um, if we have our heads too high in the clouds, we're missing stuff. Um, so we do a huge push about making sure that those three are really set to go and that they're clear and clean. So I wanted to give us some examples and I will add this to the to the um, information um, later on. I did not get a chance to actually go through and drop this part in um, to the handout part. But these are some great examples of crystals that you can use with the root chakra. Red Jasper, if someone is focusing on um, protection. Black Tourmaline is great for that too. Smoky um, Quartz is great for protection. Garnet, I think we sh I showed you the garnet before. Oops, didn't mean to do that, folks. Ha. Huh. Um, hematite, onyx, those are all very protective. Those are all about building a foundation um, and things like that. And snowflake obsidian, like I said, that is the obsidian that we talked about earlier. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Let's see. Sacral. So the orange chakra, these are some crystals. Carnelian. I do a lot with carnelian. Part of it is because I do a lot with ancient Egyptian energy. Carnelian is heavily used. So is tiger's eye. So is sunstone, um, things like that. But tangerine quartz, sunstone is, is great to work with. Mukite is a form of jasper. That's great to work with as well. So again, um, tiger's eye um, ties, ties very specifically in with some of the, the metals and things like that that I work with. Um, argonite as well. So these are, all, um, these are all crystals that are definitely appropriate for working with uh, sacral and making sure that we are focusing on new opportunities, new beginnings, new things coming in, 
uh, rebirth, stuff like that. So I wanted to give more examples of solar plexus because there's so much to choose from. Amber is great. Amber, um, so amber is actually a resin that is from plants. It's not a crystal. But um, people will give like a, a, a string of amber beads maybe to a baby to teethe on because it will help them with their teething. But that is also something that you can use for solar plexus. I love working with citrine. It's part of the um, quartz family. Um, interesting fact, the, um, if you look at the picture of citrine there on the right, it looks kind of golden because technically that's not real citrine. So crystal dealers will do something kind of dishonest where they will take um, amethyst and they'll bake it at a high temperature and the purple of the amethyst will turn that golden brown color. So natural citrine is actually something that is very, very light yellow um, getting your hands on real citrine is tough. Most of what's out there is the baked amethyst. Just, just an FYI. Um, again, um, tiger's eye. Um, I love working with pyrite. Um, honey calcite, um, again, works really well. Um, this is a chunk of calcite that has a couple of different colors in it. So it has a little bit of the orange, it has a little bit of the red. So I would might use this to kind of combine a couple of the chakras because it has almost like a rainbow effect. But if you're able to find the honey calcite, the orange calcite, those are really good. I also like the way calcite feels. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of weird when it comes to crystals where if I'm going to pick up a crystal, I have to be drawn to it, first of all. And I have to like how it fits in my hand. Because I find myself sitting here while I'm doing different things with crystals in my hands all the time. So I will find something that fits nicely in my hand. This is a piece of uh, golden, um, um, what is it? Um, uh, selenite. This is one that was actually, it did a little bit of self-repair on it. Kind of interesting. Um, so these are some examples of solar plexus. Okay. Again, if you're going to be um, focusing and manifesting, bringing in new projects, um, bringing in new opportunities, um, launching a business, you're focusing on the solar plexus. These are crystals that are great. If you're doing a whole new business, shopkeepers will keep citrine in the cash register because it's gold and gold represents money. So abundance, solar plexus, abundance, citrine, things like that. Pyrite, same thing. They would use pyrite as well for that. Heart chakra. So one thing I wanted to mention, especially when I do my different meditations, is I like to focus on the fact that there's actually two heart chakras within the heart space, okay? And you're going to notice just by looking at the colors there, some are pink and some are green, right? So the heart space, when I focus on doing the meditation, we start with the green because it brings in healing. It brings in calmness, it brings in tranquility. But when I wanna focus on self-love, self-care, self-worth, I'm bringing in the rhodonite. I know Jeremy mentioned rhodonite earlier. Kunzite is great for that. Um, rose quartz, perfect for that. Um, sometimes I'll even use pink um, amethyst. This is a geode of pink amethyst, okay? Um, 
and that the um, heart space is going to, uh, is so the heart chakra is going to sit up, up, uh, just up above the normal heart chakra. Okay. If you're familiar with that. Um, love working with watermelon tourmaline. It's hard to get your hands on it. It's pricey, but it's a great way of combining both the pink and the green together all in one shot. Unconite works really well as, as well. It's going to be green um, and pink. Um, you can't go wrong with malachite. You can't go wrong with emerald. You can't go wrong with aventurine. Another good one is amazonite as well. So those are really good for that. Um, if I'm looking at other pink crystals, um, rhodochrosite, that's a good one. Um, I also might even work with heart-shaped stones. So for example, I got one here, where are you? Here it is. So this actually is a heart-shaped stone. This is a dendratic opal, but if I were going to do something heart-related with the heart chakras, I like to use a um, heart-shaped stone. So if you found one in rose quartz, or if you found one in you know something that's green, that's great. Um, this is also something interesting because if you notice it has an iridescent coating to it, those are types of, those are the aura crystals that um, uh, have had a specialized um, me metallic kind of, many times it's either gold or silver or platinum or um, things like that that are adhered to it in order to give it that iridescence. And that is something that connects with the aura crystals. Um, it connects with the angelic and things like that. All right. Any questions on this? Are we good? Okay. Let's talk throat chakra. So Amazonite's popping up because it's bringing in that kind of um, bluish green. Um, sapphire. So this is this is sapphire. This actually is interesting because this is sapphire and ruby combined. This one's kind of rare. Um, I have a dragon here, lapis. Lapis in ancient Egypt was used all the time. It was actually used as eyeliner. Little did they know that it has a lot of copper in it, which basically would poison them. <laughs> um, fluorite is good. Um, chariolite, I don't have a piece here with me, but anything that is the indigo type of, of um, color, you're gonna bring in. Um, lepidite. Okay. Um, blue appetite. You can use that. Azurite is a combination of lapis and um, malachite combined. Um, iolite. I like working with iolite for third eye. I personally like to work with third eye. I like to work with um, tanzanite. Um, simply because for me, I find that that's much more in keeping with the indigo ray. But the other one to mention is labradorite, okay? Because we have that flash, especially the, the bluish indigo-y color. Um, there's a lot of different types of labradorite that are coming out. Some are more purple, some are more blue, green, you know, it's all a personal decision. Um, but that's something that you can work with. Crown. So selenite. So I know Jeremy has um, selenite. Um, clear quartz is always or always great for the crown. There's the tanzanite. Um, I, like I said, I like to put the tanzanite in the third eye though. Um, many times I'll do the amethyst in the crown. Um, now this does not necessarily look like amethyst, but this is a big piece of amethyst that has self-healed. You can see the structure of it. This is from inside. So it, it self-healed and um, kind of made changes along the way. Um, white calcite, you can use that. Um, selenite, 
This is um, a slightly different form of selenite and it comes because it's more clear. It comes in different um, clarities. Um, so those are some of the different crown crystals that are great to work with. If you're going to do work with the divine, if you're going to work with your higher self, if you're going to work with um, maybe archangels, angels, guides, that's a good one. Um, those are, that's, that's the particular chakra you're going to want to kind of tap into there. Okay. Um, this chart, I know it looks a little bit daunting, but I wanted to at least throw it in there for the information that you're going to get. It has a lot of different types of, um, um, columns. Everything from crystals that are good for the different chakras. So we have the chakras on the far left and the different elements. Okay. We also have the um, ailments. So if someone has um, a sinus, like sinus issues, then you're going to focus on their third eye. Um, we talked about um, lower back as sacral. Um, what else? If people have breathing issues, asthma, you're going to focus on the heart center. So those are some of the actual physicalities that people might find um, they have going on. The next column are things that you might want to bring in that are more, um, let me just shift this here, emotional. Yes, emotional. So finding clarity and inner peace is going to be, is going to be the crown. Um, protection and foundations is going to be um, the um, root chakra. Again, raw creativity, passion, sexuality, sacral. Um, we do so much from the solar plexus. Um, the next column over is um, a focus on the mental ideas of things. So if we're going to focus on self-expression, we're going to focus on the throat. Self-love, uh, love of nature, we're going to focus on the heart center. So that's that's really good. So not only do we have that, but we also have the colors, like as we talked a little bit about that earlier. We also have, um, and I know I keep moving this, malfunctions. So these are some things like if people have headaches, nightmares, third eye. Um, I get a lot of migraines, so I have to do a lot of work on my third eye. Um, but those are some good things. Also, notes. You notice B-A-G-F-E-D and then C on the bottom. You know, uh, if you've ever gone to a sound bath, um, they're all tied in with notes. If people like to connect with the different planets and the different zodiacs this is a good thing too and then finally crystals they give you some ideas of different crystals that you can utilize with these particular types of, of um, um, chakras and what's going on so I thought this was a good cheat sheet it has a lot on it but I, I think that it has a lot to to hold on to so that you can work with okay so Again, we can use crystals for enhancing meditation, uh, ensuring sound sleep, uh, put in amethyst in your bedroom, put in rose quartz to bring in self-love, protection, um, again, black tourmaline. Uh, if we're gonna be focusing on divination and manifesting, citrine is great. Um, if, I'm gonna be, if I'm gonna be manifesting, let's say abundance, then I'm gonna be looking at gold crystals. Um, we can use uh, crystals for crystal gridding of home, office, and property, for protection, for um, you know bringing in good energy. We can use crystals to connect with ascended masters, angels, and the galactic, like we saw with the tectites. We can also make tinctures. Um, basically, if we take water, and now there's two different ways of doing this. You can either put the crystal in the water and then drink the water. That's the direct way or the indirect way, which I find is probably better because not all crystals you're gonna to wanna to get wet and not all crystals 
are going to be okay for humans to um, internally take. You know, so if you have, let's say, a piece of um, azurite, raw azurite, you're not going to want to drop that in the water and then drink the water because of the elements that are actually in the crystals. So the indirect way is maybe utilizing one of these charging plates. The indirect way is taking maybe like a bowl and putting the crystals in the bowl and then putting another bowl inside that bowl and putting the water in the bowl. So those are some things that you can do. Um, Amulets and talismans, you know, those ancient Egypt did a lot with crystal talismans. Here's one of them. This is something called uh, Isis knot for protection made of carnelian. So this is something that they would have worn um, as, a, as a talisman on them. This is something that they would have put in the um, wrappings of the mummy. So that way they were able to get to the afterlife um, and, and um, get through the, the different processes and the different tests. Um, music, I mentioned music simply because I like to talk about the fact that we have the crystal singing bowls. And again, we already saw the fact that um, each of those particular types of, of chakras also have a, a, a note that's connected to them. So the hertz, hertz music, you can clear a lot. You know, you can actually clear your home by blasting different uh, hertz frequencies just by doing that. You can clear food by doing that too. So you can clear crystals by hertz as well. So <coughs> I wanted to mention these things. So we, before we actually uh, do a quick meditation, you're gonna see in the lower right-hand corner, uh, I have a little crystal sphinx and I have a little crystal. Um, so the sphinx is actually made of uh, lapidolite and the actual um, uh, pyramid, I believe was rainbow fluorite. Um, the crystal that you see on the upper left hand side is really interesting that is actually found from a friend of mine has it in Egypt um a friend of his was actually doing an archaeological dig um near one of the pyramids um not not on the Giza plateau though and they actually discovered this piece so this is clear quartz it looks kind of alien, but it actually connects with Hathor and the um, the bulls, because um, Hathor is, is a cow goddess. Um, so this is something that would have been worn as an amulet um, for working with that particular um, energetic uh, of Hathor and so on, and the and the bull, because um, they did a lot with um, worshiping cows, believe it or not. So um, we're going to do a meditation. Um, before I do that, though, I just wanted to mention my contact information is on here. Um, I always encourage people to follow our social media, follow our Eventbrite page for all sorts of different um, things that are coming up. We're going to be doing a class. Um, and actually, I think it is this. Mm, early October. I know we just posted it. It's actually going to be a remote class, a, a Zoom class with my friend in Egypt. And we're going to be focusing on um, essential oils and incenses that would have been made and used within the different temple complexes there in ancient Egypt. So you'll actually be able to see a lot of the different um, um, parts of Karnak Temple that are there as well, because I, I know he's going to be going to that one. Um, but there's a lot of different things um, that's up there. My business partner also does do different things up there as well. So our, our link tree, the reason why I put the link tree is because it has all of our social media. It has our Eventbrite, et cetera. That way, that's the best way to uh, get a hold of, of all of our stuff all in one place. So I'm going to actually um, stop sharing for the moment. No, stop sharing. There we go. So I wanted just to touch base and see if anybody has any other questions before we 
get into the meditation part. Okay. That means I did a really good job. Um, <laughs> um, all right. So what I'm going to recommend that you do is um, get comfortable and grab a crystal that you feel really drawn to. Um, many times when people are picking out crystals, they're drawn by the colors. And it's really interesting because if you're being drawn to a certain color, that could very well mean that there's a reason for it. So if it's, if it's the color that you need, um, if it's the actual crystal and its characteristics that you need, then those are, that's fine. Um, those are things that you could definitely um, work with. Um, but um, go ahead and, and get comfortable. We're gonna do this meditation. I know we have only a few minutes. So I am going to bring up some music. And I'm just going to put my audio on real quick. Hold while I bring up some music. Okay. The being of peace. Not what I wanted. Hold on. Okay. Now it's cooperating. Thank God. All right. So we're going to go ahead and just start off by taking three deep breaths. I'm going to ask you to hold the crystal in your hand. I have here a um, uh, am, amethyst, a, a carnelian um, that I really like, that I like to work with. So close your eyes and I invite you to take three deep breaths. Breathing in light and love and breathing out anything that no longer serves you. And take another deep breath in, breathing in beautiful golden light, filling your body, filling your aura. And as you breathe out, picture it removing anything that's not yours, anything that you don't need to be carrying, anything that's worn out. Picture it leaving through your nostrils, leaving your body. And one more third good breath in, again, a beautiful golden light. Mm -hmm. And allowing it to integrate into your body and your aura. And having it fortify into any nooks and crannies, etc. And as you breathe out, continue breathing out at your own natural pace. And we're going to start with calming energy at our crown as it washes down through your temples, down behind your eyes, down into your cheeks and your jaw. Feel this calming energy move down into your neck and run along the tops of your shoulders as it moves down through your arms, down through your elbows, down through your forearms and all the way out the tips of your fingers. And I want you to take another deep breath in, repositioning this calming energy again at your neck and throat. As it drops in to your throat space, allow this calming energy to move into your shoulder blades into your chest, in your heart space, into your abdomen and upper back, into your lower back and belly. Feel it as it moves down now through your hips, 
your thighs, your knees, down through your calves and shins and all the way out the tips of your toes. And I want you to picture your feet as if they are the roots of the great world tree that are burrowing into Mother Earth. Roots also sprout out of the base of your spine, burrowing into the planet as well. And your root system runs deep and wide, creating stability. And the crystals that you have in your hands slowly start to get warm as your roots burrow into the ground and they wrap around a large crystal in the center of the earth. And as you breathe in and out, the crystal at the center of the earth turns to a bright ruby red. And the ruby red energy of the crystal moves up through the roots and legs. It moves up through all the way up to your root center where it pours into your root space, filling it with vibrant, bright ruby red energy that cleanses and clears, activates and illuminates. And when it's bright and shiny and activated, breathe out. And the crystal at the center of the earth shifts to carnelian, the bright fiery orange that brings in creativity and passion, moves up through the roots, moves up through the legs, passing through your root center and moving all the way to your sacral where it drops into your sacral space. Again, cleansing and clearing, activating and illuminating. And when it's bright and shiny and activated, breathe out. And the crystal at the center of the earth shifts again, this time shifting to citrine, bringing in the raw power of excitement and joy, manifestation as it travels up through the roots, travels up through your legs, passing through your root center and your sacral, dropping into your solar plexus, filling your solar plexus with beautiful, vibrant, golden energy. You've all heard people say, trust your gut. This is where that lives. We have intuition here as well. And as it cleanses and clears, activates and illuminates, when it's bright and shiny and activated, breathe out. And the crystal at the center of the earth shifts again, this time to emerald. The emerald energy travels up through the roots, travels up through the legs, bringing in healing, relaxation and calmness, moving through the root and sacral, moving through the solar plexus where it drops into your heart space, filling it with bright green energy. And you notice Shades of pink also pour in, bringing in self-love, bringing in self-care, self-worth, bringing in watermelon tourmaline, the combination of pinks and greens, mix and mingle, creating a kaleidoscope of color, cleansing and clearing, activating and illuminating. And when it's bright and shiny and activated, breathe out. And the crystal at the center of the earth shifts again, this time to aquamarine, a beautiful blue energy that travels up through your roots and legs. 
it moves through your root center and sacral and solar plexus and heart space, where it drops into your throat space, allowing you to stand in your power, allowing you to use your voice and to stand in your sovereignty. Cleansing and clearing, activating and illuminating. When it's bright and shiny and activated, breathe out. And the crystal at the center of the earth shifts again, this time to tanzanite. And the indigo color of the tanzanite travels up through your roots, up through your legs, moving through your root center and sacral, solar plexus and heart, moving through your throat all the way up to your third eye, located just between your eyebrows, opening your third eye to its perfect point for you at this time. Fine tuning your third eye and your connection to the other side. Cleansing and clearing, activating and illuminating. When it's bright and shiny and activated, breathe out. And the crystal at the center of the earth shifts again, this time to amethyst, the color of kings, the rich regal purple, travels up through the roots and legs, passing through the root center and sacral and solar plexus, passing through the heart and throat and third eye and moving all the way up to your crown, bathing your crown in beautiful violet light, opening your crown to its perfect point for you at this time, strengthening your connection with the divine, your connection with source. And when it's bright and shiny and activated, breathe out. And now the crystal at the center of the earth shifts one more time, this time to clear quartz which is one of the strongest crystals of all. And the clear quartz moves up through the roots and legs and it moves up through your root and sacral, up through your solar plexus and heart, up through your throat and third eye and crown, putting your column of chakras in alignment that runs through the center of your body. And this beautiful white light from the clear quartz moves up and around your body, putting you in a column of beautiful iridescent white light that's healing and helping. And we take this white light and we push it above our heads and we connect with our higher self. And we push it all the way up high into the sky, connecting with the divine, connecting with source, breathing from our roots and feet up through our body, up to our higher self, up to source, and from source and self down through our body, down to our roots, down into the ground, breathing through the circuit of energy up, and down, up, and down. And one more time, up and down. So you're grounded and anchored, yet connected and inspired. And I want you to picture yourself walking in the forest. You have your crystal in your hand, and you're moving through the forest. You hear the sound of pine needles crunching under your feet. You can smell the pines. And it's slowly getting darker, but you feel safe and sound and secure. 
And as you walk through the forest, you notice what looks like a cave. You walk up to the cave and there at the entrance of the cave is a fire torch for you oh. that's burning. With your crystal in one hand, you grab the torch and you make your way into the cave. And as you tra traverse the cave, you find yourself spiraling down, moving down into the ground, feeling the cool walls of stone, taking nine steps down, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And as you step off of the step, there is a place for you to put your torch that stays illuminated. And the room lights up with beautiful colors and crystals lined all along the walls. And as you look around this very magical place, you notice a very large crystal that's there. It's the crystal from the center of the earth. And you walk up to it. And with your crystal in one hand, you touch the face of the crystal with the other hand. And the crystal in your hand lights up, allowing it to connect with you, allowing it to bring in healing, bring in joy, bring in calmness and serenity, providing healing And you can feel this energy traveling from the crystal through your body. Allowing you to feel safe and secure and protected. And this crystal gives you a healing energy. And slowly you take your hand off of this large crystal there in the center of this cavern at the center of the earth. And you continue to look around. And this is a place that you can go to at any time through meditation, the ground, to heal, to raise your vibration. It feels very much like home. And as you look around the room, your eyes map out everything that you see there in your memory. And once you have this magical cavern mapped out in your mind's eye, you turn around and head back to the entrance where your torch is waiting for you. Picking up your torch, 
you travel back up those nine steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Stepping back to the mouth of the cave. There's a bucket of water that you didn't notice before. And you extinguish your torch there in that bucket of water. And placing your crystal, which connects you to this cavern at any time that you have currently in your hands right now, and this energy, you place it in your pocket and you find your path back through the forest, smelling the rich and fragrant pine needles, seeing the twilight of the sun, hearing small animals as they get ready for the evening, feeling the soft pine needles crunch under your feet, moving back and back and back. And as I count back from one to five, we will leave this forest. One, two, remembering all of our journey, three, feeling the energy from our crystal, four, becoming aware of our surroundings, and five, moving our fingers and toes, wide awake, alert, and clear, and back. And when you're ready, come back. Let me know that you're back. And when you're ready, just let me know. I want to make sure everyone is back. <laughs> now I know we left, we lost Jeremy and we lost Arlen. So I do hope that they're okay. Good to know that you're back, Steph. Good, good, good. Um, does anybody have any questions or any information or anything that they'd like to share or anything like that? Okay, what I'm going to say is give yourself some time, maybe spend some time journaling um, this journey, um, working with this crystal in particular, what drew you to it, see what information it has for you from this magical journey, and um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. You're always welcome to um, connect with me um, through email or um, text message or or what have you. Um, again, the link tree will get you to all of our events and things like that. And um, let me know if there's anything else that we can do for you. I will go ahead and send out a um, copy of this video to everybody. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and stop the need. If I can find it, give me a sec. <laughs>